Honey Boo Boo. What about Honey Boo Boo? I've got no idea. I just thought I'd say it. I get called a Honey Boo 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 Lana. Yeah, I, I don't even know what it is. Have you ever heard of Toddlers and Tiaras? Oh, I, I have heard of it. I haven't watched it. Okay. I think it's Toddlers and Tiaras because I don't really pay attention. I mean, I know the kid is from one of those type of shows, so I think it's Toddlers and Tiaras. Mm. There was a kid in it called Honey Boo Boo, and apparently she got the public's attention in the US. Yeah. And they gave her her own show with her family who were weird. And then her stepfather ended up being like a child sex offender or something. I think I've heard of this. Yeah. And the show got cancelled. That's oh. it. Yeah. And the show was called Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. That's it. Because I remember I watched a bit of it when it was on the TV and I was like, what the hell, man? Yeah. Toddlers and Tiaras is disgusting, man. Why are you fetishizing children? What a surprise, you know, one of the parents turns out to be a bit of a creep. <laughs> Anyone could walk into those competitions. You don't know what you're parading your kids in front of. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah, also what they make their kids go through as well. Yeah, like some of them put fake tan on them. Yeah. Makeup on a child, that's awful. I saw one, they were putting like false teeth on it to make it look like her teeth were nicer than they were. Wearing these over-the-top dresses and, like, wigs and things. Yeah. You know what? I think they should do those child pageantry awards. Just so, you know, the social services know who to keep an eye on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that, like, the social services is any good at keeping an eye on people. Try their best. Uh, and always funded very well. That's true, but... <sighs> they have their flaws, but, like, I, I know there's some good people in social services. Yeah. But it's like the police, though. Like, they're not all shit, but you know there are some that are really shit. Yeah. The problem is that there isn't enough training and the quality of people they get sometimes aren't great. It's not the people that actually want to do it. Yeah. It's the people that think it's easy money. It's not always an easy job, though, because people are a bit weird about taking kids from parents, even if the parents are like, dog shit parents mm. and also even if you take the kids away from the parents what are you going to do put them in an overcrowded foster home yeah i mean they're not going to exactly have the best quality of life and then they'll be phased out of the system at 16 and then left to fend for themselves yeah it is a weird system we have here uh, everywhere you're never going to get a perfect system out of that so. no you can't i mean some people aren't born to be parents which yeah. is why abortions exist but some for some reason people are some people are against abortions i do genuinely think that if you're gonna be a parent there has to be like a comprehensive test that you take because i don't think anyone should be able to be a parent it mm. isn't a right it should be like a privilege i guess because you're imparting wisdom and molding a mind yeah i kind of see your point but that's like an ideal world that and also we're overpopulated as fuck so more people should be getting abortions or just not getting pregnant. That's a better option. It's cheaper. Don't yeah, get I would say not getting pregnant is probably Don't a better get idea. Well, they're capping the child tax now, aren't they? Are they? Well, the child benefit. If you have more than two children, mm. you can't get additional child benefit. You only get it for two kids unless yeah. it's like a multiple birth, like you have twins or something. I mean, it's going to be hard for parents that already have multiple children. Yeah. I guess it will stop people breeding for money yeah i know it happens because i've seen it happen yeah i mean I, you've got to believe that's the only reason that they, they would have kids because they clearly shouldn't have kids <laughs> yeah but i don't know back in the old days that would have been torture that would what you know back when they used to have like 11 kids and stuff like that yeah it's a good thing that we'd be reducing the population because already like this country has very little money to spend in its public services and all that stuff and the social security. Yeah. So maybe if there's less people living in it and, you know, claiming from it might be easier. But I, that's my, my point of view, and I'm optimistic. To be honest, they're going to be saving money. They're going to be spending on stuff that we don't like, like expenses. Yeah, you know they're going to have a perfect system. No. So. To be honest, I don't understand why they get expenses. I mean, if it's like at work. Fine, order some stationery. But, like, travel and stuff, just pay them a salary and just get on with it. Yeah. It's like any other job. My bo employers pay my wages. I don't expect them to pay my travel. I don't expect them to pay my rent. I don't expect them to pay any bills, even if it's because I'm calling them or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't expect it anywhere else, would you? 
I mean, sure, like top tier companies and stuff, if you're like an executive or something like that, yeah, they get expenses, but yeah, well, there are some companies that do expenses, but they get capped. It's yeah. Not limitless. Yeah. Just pay them a salary and get on with it. Those poor MPs. <laughs> It'd be cheaper to pay them a salary. Well, I think they get a salary anyway. Yeah, fuck it. They could just have their salary. Yeah. Bloody MPs. And to be fair, they don't even need expensive for pens, okay? You have an office manager in Parliament. They could check how many pens they need and they just buy a bulk load and everyone shares a box. That's yeah. it. Jesus Christ. If there's anything like school where, you know, my, my sister sometimes has to go out and buy the bloody pens. So the bloody office managers will have to be like buying their own pens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How did the hell did we end up talking about office supplies? <laughs> I, don't know. I think we segued a bit too early today. Well, I wasn't segueing it, and then you jumped into it. Did I? <laughs> honey boo boo. That's like oh. the first words you said was honey boo boo. That wasn't even a segue though. That was just me trying to say something. <laughs> well, you were saying something about a young child, so I, su- I assumed. Oh, okay. I didn't even know honey boo boo was a young child. <laughs> okay. I didn't know whether it was some kind of. <laughs> um... Okay, Matt, Google it right now on your phone. Google Honey Boo Boo. Okay. Listeners, we are going to get the reaction of Matt seeing Honey Boo Boo and reading about Honey Boo Boo. Currently, my phone's still on male sex dolls at the moment. (laughs) Here Uh, comes. uh, The listeners didn't hear my comment about how can you use a blow up male sex doll? It won't get hard enough. Oh, interesting. I feel sorry for the poor girl. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, my dog was impressed as well. Of Honey Boo Boo? Yeah. Oh, my dog. God, the mother. <laughs> What's her name? Because I know she has, a, like, a different, what well, a nickname. Oh. I don't know what it is. Is it Mama June? That's it. Uh, the dad totally doesn't look like a paedophile. <laughs> it's not even her dad, it's a stepdad. Oh, stepdad. And he actually is. And he's around this pageantry. There's a, there's a lovely one of, I think, the mum, Mama June, coughing or something like that. Oh, OK. Or she's got a mouth open. <laughs> I think we should get off the boo-boo. <laughs> uh, we're going to intro music while Matt entertains himself because he's clearly just still staring at his phone. Entertaining Appalled, myself. intently staring at his phone. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm no longer on the phone. Okay, well, let's just do the intro music so you can get over this, what has just happened to your eyes. Yeah. Okay, so intro music, please. <laughs> Stuff. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, you're I'm good back now. now. I'm back you're now. Back. I was enjoying that little bit of jazz. <laughs> you're enjoying that. Are you going to enjoy this? What we're talking about this week? It's not not quite so um, like happy story, is it? This one? Mm, not quite. It's not exactly you know your feel good kind of. Well, the th- problem is we don't know. It could be okay for him i mean there's a chance true okay well this week if you hadn't noticed by the title we're going to be talking about garnell moore that's how you pronounce it isn't it as well yeah you can't well, Garna- garnell monroe moore yeah Mo- oh, monroe yeah that's his middle name like marilyn yeah he's, okay. he's exactly like marilyn monroe isn't he? yeah just exactly like him huh yeah <laughs> did you say him <laughs> other than you know small african-american boy the reason we are talking about him is because he disappeared. But it's not just a disappearance. So, yeah. I mean, this will probably be a short one because we don't know what's going on. Yeah. Can I add something quickly yeah. about this? Uh, you know, in the year 2006, do you know how many missing persons cases there were in Baltimore? How many? 298. How many of them are in Leakin Park? I don't know, actually. Because Baltimore, Leakin Park, hand in hand. Yeah, because it's very close, isn't it, this one? Yeah. I, I saw that. I actually looked on the maps. Well, how big is Baltimore? I guess it's pretty big. In one year, that many? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, and think about the ones that go unreported. I think it has got a problem with crime. I mean, it was where the wire was set. And it is where Leakin Park is. If you're going there to bury a body, you're going to find another body that's been buried, for crying out loud. Yeah. That was one of my favourite episodes, I think, Leakin Park. <laughs> Me too. Anyway, so Garnell Moore, mm. who I'd like to say before I actually get carried away, he seems like the cutest kid. Have you seen that picture of him? Yeah. He is so adorable. And it just makes it even more heartbreaking. Yeah. He's the cutest kid. 
He was born on May 18th, 1995, which if you think about it, is only a couple of years younger than us. Like uh, three, four years younger than us. Yeah. He's around about our age. He'd be about 20 now. Well, he wouldn't be 20. He'd be 22. They did an interview with his, like, half-sister. Yeah. And they're going on about how she's now, now like, 26. And it kind of made me realise just how old this guy would be now. Yeah, he's 22 now. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, he was born May 18th, 1995, and, well, he was an African-American male. He had a harsh beginning. His mum was in and out of prison. His father was a bit of a transient. He was a nomad. He would come in and out of his life, Mm. always switching up where he lived. So Garnell didn't really have much of a foundation. Uh, In his formative years, his early years, he lived with his paternal family in Harlem? Harlem Avenue. Harlem Avenue in Baltimore. Yeah, which is, um, it's just south of Lincoln Park, I think. Yeah. Okay, I just remembered why we did the episode on Lincoln Park. So while we're talking about Garnell Moore, can we stop talking about Lincoln Park? Okay. Please. (laughs) Because, like, the connection, no. I don't want that connection in my head. (laughs) Okay. Um, Yeah, so Harlem Avenue on the west side of Baltimore. So he lived there up until the age of six. In 2001, his aunt, who was called Belinda Cash at the time, Mm. she informally took over a guardianship role of him. And she was childless at the time. And I don't think she was married, was she? She was unmarried at that point in time. I think so. I think she's been married a few times. What I read was that um, when the police caught up with her, when they were investigating this, uh, she'd recently divorced and had remarried again. So she married at least twice, from what we know. So Garnell went to live with Cash at the age of six. Yeah. So Garnell actually did have some half-siblings, through his mother. I I, was it three? Because there's Latonia Williams. Yeah, and their parents, she had two sisters. His siblings were raised by the maternal aunt, Trina. which is Trina Morton. Yeah. So they actually did have some contact with each other while he was young, prior to him living with Belinda Cash and even afterwards. The last time they saw her was, was it August 2002? I think they saw him the last time in 2001. But his dad did see him in 2002 or 2003. Okay. So I think it was 2002. Yeah. His dad saw him. Okay. So he had some contact with his step, his half siblings, as well as his aunt Trina, who he affectionately called her Frina, I read somewhere, um, because he couldn't pronounce her name. Yeah. And he was reported to be a happy, lively child, always full of energy. Mm. And he was actually going to be staying for a period of time with Trina, but at the time she was nine months pregnant and she'd gone into labour early. So that visit had been cancelled. And when Trina had got in touch with Belinda Cash to rearrange the visit, apparently Belinda was too busy. She stated that she was moving house. Yeah. Whether she was moving house or not, who knows. But that's what she said, and she said that she couldn't arrange a visit at this time because her life was too hectic. And that was in 2001. So that was the last time Trina Morton and his half sibling saw Garnell. After Belinda had said no to the visit, they sort of lost touch with each other for yeah. a little while. And because Belinda seemed a bit of a transient as well, she moved around a lot too. She changed her phone numbers. Uh, like we said before, she'd married and changed her name before. So that might have been an issue too. So they actually had no way to get in touch with her. They had contact with Garnell's father, which Matt mentioned before. He had given them contact information for Belinda so they can contact Garnell. But I think she had stated that he was on a field trip to Virginia, yeah? Yeah. And that was in 2005. Yeah. Okay, so the last time Garnell's father actually saw him was in 2002. And fast forward three years, 2005 when his relatives, half-siblings, and his aunt is trying to contact him and finally managed to get through to Belinda. Uh, she says that he's on a school field trip to Virginia. Yeah. The problem is, from the date that he was under Belinda's care, so 2001, even before that, I don't 
as well because I don't. When do they start school in America? I don't know, but um, I think there's kindergarten and you go into school when you're like six, so that would have yeah. been the age. I got the feeling he hadn't been to school at all. Yeah, no, that's the thing. So he hadn't gone before. Belinda, he'd gone into Belinda's care yeah. and he hadn't re- enrolled since. But So I think it's, you go to kindergarten in America and then you start proper school when you're six. So that would have been the right age because he went to live with yeah. Belinda at age six. So she should have enrolled him in school. But he was never enrolled in any school. So that's kind of weird. When Garnell's family, maternal family, contacted the police and they tracked down Belinda... Well, she states that she didn't want to take care of him anymore, so she actually left him in front of a social services building, on the steps of the social services building, I think she said. Yeah. Specifically. Yeah. In 2002. Um, 2005. 2005. No, that's when she said that she'd left him there in 2002. Uh, okay, there's so many different timelines. So they con- they tracked her down in 2005. Oh. So she had said that she didn't want to deal with the child anymore and left him on the steps of a social services building in 2002. Okay. I think it might have been August 2002, because according to the Charlie Project, that's the date he's been missing since. Oh, okay. Actually, no, sorry, I'm so wrong. On the Charlie Project, the reason they're saying he's missing since August 2002 was that was the last time a different aunt saw him. Yeah. That's when Trina Morton last saw him. So Trina Morton, yeah, they last saw him in 2002. That's when she... Uh, went into labour. So no one had actually seen him since then. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't actually know when she said that she had left him on the social services steps. Yeah. Well, I, I just wrote down 2005, but that could have been the year that she told them that. So. I think, well, because I know that was the year that it had been reported that he was missing because his family were getting a bit iffy. Yeah. But I don't know when she had actually stated that, hmm. We'll maybe try and find that out. Maybe, or or one of you can tell us if you're in Baltimore and you know the case very well. Because the problem is with this, we mentioned it before, there's not a lot on it. Yeah. Okay, so that was the last confirmed sighting of him was in 2002. His disappearance was reported in 2005. The police eventually tracked down Belinda Cash. She stated she'd left him to the state because she didn't want to take care of him. But the police are going by... Trina Morton's last sighting of him, which is in 2002, saying he's been missing since then. They searched the home that Belinda lived in in 2002 to see if they could find what was left of him there. But the problem is she's so transient, she's she's moved around so much, it's really hard to track where her movements, where she's been, where she is even now. Because I've got an article on here, I can't remember, what date was it? Oh, from 2007, so it was quite a while back. But apparently she disappeared, according to this article. Yeah. they 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 couldn't track her down for the article. They didn't know what her name was at the time either. So, yeah, that's pretty much all the information I have, I think, was basically Garnell went missing and he wasn't reported missing until three years later, which is why this case is so weird. Yeah. Say, Say she did leave him on the steps of a social services building. Would she remember what building it was? Would she have told the police? Would the police chase up on that? Um, I'm sure they must have done. Yeah. The only problem is if no one... Ah, no, I've got that. <laughs> I've got the building here. Have How you? could I forget? The bloody oh. Charlie Project. You should try the Charlie Project. It's it's good. Um, So it is a social services building in the 500 block of North Hilton Street near Edmondson Avenue in West Baltimore. In their investigation to Garnell's disappearance, authorities discovered the address Cash gave was fictitious. So she gave an address and the police did chase it up and they found out it didn't exist. So Uh, it's not looking good for her. Yeah. I was hoping that maybe she had, she just forgot or she gave the wrong address or she couldn't remember. Because that might have meant, okay, maybe he was taken in by the social services maybe he was placed in with a good family and maybe he didn't give his name or something but so so weird this case stuff like that and like the phone numbers being wrong yeah she kept changing her phone numbers and everything it's just yeah and i know she's got a bit of a like she moves around a bit but still seems a bit dodgy to me that in the early 2000s it's not like Everyone had a contract phone. Yeah. It was SIM cards. It was prepaid. 
the only reason we have the numbers that we have had for the past 10 years is because we're on contract. Yes, it's preferable, but remember when we were younger, we'd go for, we'd, we'd change numbers often. Yeah. When we were getting our first phones, we was like, oh, this SIM card, you spend £5, you get 300 texts. Oh, this SIM card, you spend £10, or stuff like that. Do we even know if they're mobile phones, though? They could be like this house phone. So I heard one was disconnected when they tried calling. That could have just been that she couldn't pay her bill. Yeah. So maybe maybe there were house phones. Yeah, because it was the early 2000s. I mean, now we don't really have many. I mean, everyone's got like a landline number, but that's because everything is attached to it. You've got like your broadband and all that stuff. But not many people, unless you're of the older generation, use landlines. Also, it, it sounds like a bit of a kind of, poor area so yeah they might not have mobile phones yeah so Mm. this whole thing is bizarre and i I don't want to think it right but i don't it's this woman belinda cash i don't understand why she's out i mean they must be able to charge her with something i don't well that's what's what i read on one like website i think it was reddit or something like saying why hasn't she been charged but i don't know i mean it could be something like because she's technically wasn't his legal guardian possibly which is another thing that i first of all he should have read every child has to legally register in some sort of school or right or something like that right they have Um, to unless like you're homeschooled but you have to declare that i don't know about the rules about that legally i'm pretty sure every child has to have an education um Oh, but come on, we live in England. People get fined for taking their kid out of school for one day. Yeah. I don't know what it's like in Baltimore, though. Well, I guess it's 2002 as well. Yeah. America's like a group of states and they've all got different rules, so mm. you don't know. But, I mean, even if that thing kind of did exist, it's got to be followed up. Mm. That's not always going to happen. I mean, there's, there's lots of kids you've got to deal with. Hmm. There could be any number of people like Garnell. So. Yeah. And um, with this Belinda Cash woman, I know she has no history of child abuse, but it's, I have seen it stated a couple of times that she has got a criminal record, but it's not major crimes. Yeah. But I still want to know what crimes they are. Yeah. I mean... Shouldn't that be published somewhere? Yeah. In America, you can look up people that are felons, right? That live in your area. I think so. Yeah, so how is this not... I guess if she's changing her name constantly and moving around. Yeah. But, Mm. like, also, someone said about that, like, the thing that she's not got any history of child abuse. She hasn't... From what we know, she hasn't had any children. Yeah, she was childless. I mean, everything I've read says she was childless. You're not going to have a history of child abuse if you don't have children. Yeah, and who knows, she might have had a kid off the books, yeah. kept him at home, and done something with him. Yeah. And also, uh, she's been married several times, you never know if there was a man in her life or not at that time. Maybe the man didn't want anything to do with the child, and he got rid of her. Yeah. He got rid of her? He got rid of Garnell, I mean. Yeah. It's It sort of reminds me a bit of, like, you remember Victoria Klimby? No. She was the girl that died, a f- it was a while ago, I think it was 2000. So she was in England. She was from, I think, France or the Ivory Coast or somewhere sort of like that. Uh, her parents gave her to a family friend to have her educated. So she ended up bringing her to England and oh. she was abused. And the abuse got worse when the family friend partnered up with a man. And eventually, because of all the abuse, she died. And she was known to so many different social services units in different areas, like Haringey and other ones. I know Haringey was one of them, and there was a few others. But, like, it had all gone unnoticed. It was really frustrating. They didn't even make an effort to see her. Yeah. They said a dressy moved and stuff on their records, and they just file it away. It's really frustrating. You should look up that case. It was horrible. Yeah. Horrifying. But you've seen it happen. You've seen people turn. She could have been a lovely guardian and the wrong man or someone came into her life and managed to turn her against him. You've seen it happen before. Yeah. Parents do that with their own kids sometimes. Yeah. That was something that crossed my mind. Yeah. I I don't know. I kind of feel deep down she's got to be nice enough to have taken him in. Yeah. Certainly not under any obligation to do so. True. The police must not believe that she has something to do with it, though. 
if yeah. something if harm has come to Garnell. But, because they would have tried to keep tabs on her, right? Mm, but I think for, for what I was reading, though, um, and some people are a bit suspicious about this, the police don't seem to believe he did come to any harm. Yeah, how do they know that? Well, that just makes me feel like the police aren't taking it seriously. If they're saying, oh, they, uh, we don't actually think he's come to any harm. Yeah. We don't know what's happened to him. That is the problem. Yeah. Okay, so Belinda Cash might not have done anything to him directly, but she didn't report him missing. She didn't report anything. Yeah. And she clearly lying about the social services. Yeah. So, to be honest, she could have got arrested for, I don't know, there is a crime about misleading the police. I've forgotten what it's actually called. It's like perverting the course of justice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's it, perverting the course of justice. She could have got arrested for that. They could have kept her in for that, just tried to push harder to find out what actually happened. Yeah. It's really frustrating. I feel like this whole episode is me saying it's really frustrating. Well, no, it is, because, I mean, this poor kid, we know what's happened to him at all, and they seem to be saying he's not come to any harm, but they got no How proof. do they know? Like, you can't just say that. Yeah. You have no idea where this child is. Okay, so if they say that about him, they could say that about anybody that's gone missing. It's like, ah, oh, we don't think he's actually hurt, so we just won't bother. Well, I think we said most people who go missing end up dead. So. Yeah, they do if you don't find them within, like, 72 hours. This was three years. Yeah, so the statistics pile up against that, so... He was a six-year-old boy, seven-year-old boy, when he was last seen. Mm. Had his whole life ahead of him. Now he just he vanished off the face of the earth and no one noticed for three years. Yeah. It's horrifying that that could actually happen. This reminds me a little bit of, like, the Bear Brook murders, though, in a way. You know, like, they're, they're just going under, like, the radar, these people. I think that's why it's so easy for it to happen. Yeah, and it's also really scary. This can't be the isolated case. There must be more like it. There must be more people that have gone missing off the face of the earth that haven't been reported. I, I would certainly think so in, this, in a country the size of America as well. Yeah. The problem is with this one, he's a child. He's alone in the world. He never had anyone to look out for him. And if if she just kicked him out, then he ha- was left to fend for himself. Her kicking him out is the optimistic opinion for me. Yeah. But then, again, we don't know what happened to him. Anything could have happened. Yeah. Even if she, like, dropped him at a social services, surely the social services would have noticed at some point. I mean, unless he walked off. What do you mean? If you're saying it's true that she she did drop him off at some social services, perhaps, you know, she got the wrong one, maybe, or she couldn't remember where it was. Even if that had happened, the social service, surely they would have taken him in. They would have taken him in. They would have tried to figure out who he was. They would have actually tried to find some family members. Yeah. At the bare minimum, they would have got his name. I know I said something about before about maybe he just didn't give his name, but he's seven years old. It's not like he's three. Yeah. He's seven. He's he's a child. He knows his name. He knows the people around him. He would have been able to give them his name. Yeah. I mean, the, en- the only way is if he'd, like, walked off somewhere. Yeah, maybe. But then maybe. Where, where's the seven-year-old going to go? <laughs> yeah. I think the most... He'd try and get, get back home. That's what I'd try to do. Yeah, he'd probably try and find home. And, again, you don't know what has happened to him after that, yeah. which is why it's infuriating that the police say they don't think he's in trouble. They don't think he's come to any harm. Yeah. Like, do they know something? We don't. They must do. Yeah. I really don't get why they say that. I I think they could say we haven't been able to find anything about him because he's so under the radar. But why come to the conclusion he hasn't been harmed? I'd be more forgiving if they phrased it differently. So there's no evidence that he'd come to any harm than, oh, no, we think he's all right. Yeah. Uh, We'll move on to the next one. Yeah. It's so... uh, It sounds like she can't look after the child anymore. If it was just her not being able to look after the child, Mm. his maternal aunt has already reached out to her or tried to reach out to her before. She has actually wanted to spend time with him. If she can't look after him, why not reach out to her again? Yeah. Well, that's what makes me think so dodgy's happened to him. Yeah. She's clearly not coping too well. I think what you do in that situation... You could do anything if you, if you, I mean, from what I heard, he, he was a bit hyperactive. Yeah, but that's like every child, though. Mm, it, he could have been unusually hyperactive, I don't know. But if you're not used to looking after children, 
can imagine that is quite difficult. But she'd had him for like a year. How could she not have gotten used to him? Um, well, it might be all right at first. You might, when the novelty wears off, which is what sometimes happens mm. with children. When you're not used to it, when you, you've got this idea of what having a child's like, and it doesn't really fit, the, you know, what reality's like. Mm. So you think she just snapped one day? Possibly. Sounds like she couldn't cope, to be honest. Well, I did also think what you said, that there's, like, a man involved and he possibly didn't like the kid. I Well, that's just one theory. I mean, I have no evidence of a man being involved, but I don't really know that much about her. Yeah. All I know is that she has had a relationship. She's been married, a, like, more than once. She's changed her name a few times. Yeah. And I know I'm being judgmental, but... I'm pretty sure there's going to be men coming in and out of her life. Yeah. I, d I don't know why I think it, but I do. So don't flame me. I'm not... Oh, it's, it's not unusual, yeah. is it? Yeah. A lot of people have relationships. And relationships do change you. Like I was saying before, she could have been a lovely aunt yeah. and someone could have come along and changed that. Or she could have been a terrible aunt the whole way through. She could have been abusing him for the whole year. We don't know. And in one day she took it too far. Yeah. I mean, the aunt saw him on occasion. He wasn't seen by he wasn't seen at school. He wasn't never enrolled in school, so no one was seeing him regularly in school. He wasn't known to any social services, so no social services people would have seen him. No social workers would have gone to see him. He wouldn't be on their books. Yeah. So she's the only one that had daily contact with him. No one else. Mm. She could have kept him out of anyone's view. Yeah. I see I, I, that's what I think is the problem. Because mm. no one's really properly in his life. I mean, even even like Belinda, she's only in his life for a year. Yeah. Because you don't know why he moved from the paternal relatives to Belinda. How? What relationship was Belinda? I she was a Belinda paternal was... aunt, but she's she's yeah. obviously living separately. But he because he lived at Harlem Avenue for five years at least, mm. or six years. Why did he have to move? Maybe it was death in the family. Yeah. I don't know. It maybe, I mean, maybe they were old and they couldn't cope. Possibly. I'm not. I'm not trying to be judgmental. Why weren't they out there? Yeah, that's another thing. It's okay. So he had been raised from pretty much birth with these other relatives. Yeah. Why weren't they the ones that were trying to get in contact with him? They should love him, right? He's been with them for years. Yeah. It's not like oh, he's a person. He's like a nephew or a grandson that comes occasionally. He's a person that's been raised in their house. But it was Trina Morton, the maternal person that saw, maternal aunt that saw him once in a while, that was trying so hard to get contact with him. Yeah. It wasn't these people that had actually raised him. So that's why I'm thinking either they are shit human beings or they had passed away. Yeah. So Belinda had no other choice. Yeah. But to be honest, it seemed like Trina probably would have been happy to take him. I mean, she already had, but then again, she had three of her sister's kids and then she was pregnant. So she had at least one of her own. Yeah. I get the feeling she would have at least looked after him for a little while. Yeah, she could have been like a relief babysitter. Yeah. Because she's already taken on the care of three of her sister's children. Yeah. She seems like a good human being. I mean, she tried for years to contact him. She was the one that was yeah. spearheading it. She was the one that was tracking down Garnell's father to get information on Belinda. She was the one that reported it to the police. Um, yeah, this, uh, um, her and the half, the half sister, the Latonia, I think it was. They seem like the only people trying to do anything about it. They're the people that cared and they're the people that weren't actually a part of his life. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, they saw him. But they didn't live together. I don't know how frequently they saw him. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming not too frequent. Yeah, I get the feeling it's like maybe every year or so, perhaps. Maybe. It's... Twice a year, maybe, at most. Jesus Christ, man. This this is going to... This, like, haunts me, this type of stuff. Yeah. Mm. But it's the kind of way of life sometimes for some people, though, isn't it? So... Yeah. It is shocking that someone could just disappear off the face of the earth and no one notices for two years, mm. three years. Yeah, I mean, it's all well saying they should, like, be more responsible, but if that's the way of life they know, that's hard to break, that kind of thing. Some people just shouldn't be parents. Yeah. For once, our opening conversation was totally on point. Yeah, in some ways it would have been. They, I mean, the parents, I mean... The parents were shite, yeah. let's just be honest. I think, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're great parents, but... No one wants that kind of thing to happen, though. They don't care enough to be in his life in the first place. Yeah. So I don't... I take issue 
if they had come out and said, oh my God, we're devastated. Well, you didn't care about him when he was around. Yeah. Okay, I get that his mum was in that prison, but people in prison can see their family. It doesn't have to be the end of everything. They can build a relationship. Yeah, but I mean, I think she had almost no contact with him during his life, so. So she can just do one. Yeah. It's so frustrating. <laughs> oh, man. I should have said it at the beginning. Okay, listeners, go back to the beginning of this episode. Every time either one of us say it, it's so frustrating, just take a shot. <laughs> do it. Do it. It'll Drink be fun. Again. Yeah, it's a drinking game. Do it. It'll be fun. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Because I, I don't think there's too many more actually solid facts to this. There's not. There's nothing about this. Yeah. That's what's so worrying, isn't it? I yeah. Think, in a way. Personally, I hate to think it because I've been literally staring at his face for 45 minutes. Yeah. But I don't think he's alive. My instincts tell me not. Just because, like, the whole missing person yeah. thing. I mean, yeah, it's happened. Like, kids have shown up, like, decades after they went missing. Mm. But that's the exception. It's not the rule. Yeah. I suppose it's entirely possible he's still alive and he would look probably quite different. Well, have you seen the age progression picture of him? Yeah. I mean, obviously he's going to look different because he was seven when he left. Yeah. And age projection isn't a science. Projection? Projection? progression also i, I don't I'm, I'm not sure how true this but i was reading on reddit that the size description given for him seems a bit weird yeah five three 120 pounds at seven years old isn't that a bit much because i'm five three yeah i mean not game casting is fair but he sounds like it came from a, a poor area no no i'm just gonna say this for a fact he was seven years old i'm five two yeah. And it, on the internet, it states he's 5'3", 120 pounds. He's taller than me, and I'm... Okay, I know I'm not tall, but I'm not a midget. There's no way a seven-year-old is going to be taller than me. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think the sizing is wrong. Yeah. How would they know the height and weight? Because if he was kept away from school, I'm assuming he was kept away from a doctor as well. Yeah. And the doctors, they're the ones that do the checks, don't they? Yeah. I mean, who would have checked his weight and size? That's why well, well, this article is saying basically they, they just gave, him, gave the police any information. £120 for a seven-year-old? I'm sorry, even if he was in, in a poor area, right? A lot of, most seven-year-olds aren't that fat. They eat whatever they feel like it. Yeah. I mean, I know we've got an obesity crisis, but generally, the seven-year-olds I've encountered... They can eat like pigs <laughs> and they'll be tiny because they're always running around and burning it off. Yeah. And it seems like he was hyperactive and running around a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, these details don't help about him. He was clearly not 5'3". I mean, I know I've only got a picture of his face, but he seems like he's small. His features are small. Yeah. He's not... A seven-year-old is not 5'3". Yeah, that didn't come across. It. A seven-year-old is not taller than me. To be fair, I'm about five two and a half, so almost five three. So a seven year old isn't my height. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're about the same height. Do you really think a seven year old is going to be taller about taller than us? No. Exactly. I, I'd be depressed. I would be depressed. I know kids sometimes are tall, but not when they're seven. It's when they hit puberty, isn't it? When that, that's when they shoot up. The only thing I would say is, like at, at school, my, my, my sister, there are a couple of kids who are slightly taller than her. Yeah, but what year does she teach? Uh, year four, five, six. That's 11. It's heading towards 11. So that's puberty. Mm, not quite. I would well, say that's... 13's more puberty. Well, some people go through the change early. She's taught between, like, the years of year three and five. But I've seen your sister. She's, like, really short, though. She's even shorter than you, right? Still got to be five. R- roughly with how tall this guy is. I'm pretty sure. Wasn't your sister shorter than you? Yeah, but it, it's not going to be that much shorter, is it? Yeah, but you're about my height and I'm about five, two and a half. I'm about five foot four. Are you? Yeah. Okay, so your sister, if, if I thought she was really short, she must have been shorter than me. Maybe. I couldn't judge on that one, but I don't know. I think we're latching on to the wrong details here. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I think it's unlikely he was five foot three, but it's not totally impossible. He's seven. I still, th- I think the weight's more. Yeah, he was not going to be one hundred and twenty pounds. You'd be more of an exception if you're tall at that age, but some people are, are pretty tall when they're young. Maybe. You know, I think it's more the weight that that doesn't seem right. Well, I guess if he's taller, then that's more weight. Um, not necessarily. Tall people can be pretty thin. True. True. 
Yeah, but the the height and weight doesn't ring true because first of all, he's seven. Second of all, who would have checked that shit? Yeah, I mean, I I, I think it's dodgy. That yeah, is not. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but I I don't think it's very believable. Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah, his face like I get like a a pang of pain in my heart because yeah, he just looks like the most adorable, lively, happy child. Yeah. And we don't know what's happened. He literally disappeared off the face of the earth and no one noticed. Yeah. It's like when someone dies in their home and, like, they bopped and no one's noticed for months and they only noticed because of the smell. Yeah. No one ever tried to reach out. Yeah, well, there's been a couple of instances of that recently and I think yeah. I think that's what's so scary. I mean, I think we all like to believe that we do something in that situation, but we don't always. We kind of have that, I think, idea it's not our business Yeah. sometimes or you think someone else is doing it. The thing is, you think someone else would surely notice. Yeah. You don't always, you know. Mm. You get, I mean, also, you don't always necessarily assume things you can say, oh, he's gone on holiday or something like that or whatever. Yeah. You just mm. don't know. Okay. But this, yeah, it's a mystery, this one. It's a true mystery and I really don't know, unless, like, a body shows up. I don't think we're ever going to find out what happens. to Yeah. Him. I mean, what what's, like, weird about this one is, like, there's no even theories, like, as to what's happened to him, is there? You no, know, there isn't. All I know is that the aunt lied about what she did to him. So, to me, I think no matter what's happened to him, she is the guilty party. Yeah. I get that there wasn't a formal guardianship, right? But she had taken him under her wing. She yeah. was supposed to care for him. And she didn't live up to that, that end of the deal. Yeah. And she's lied about it. If something had happened to him, she should have said something at the time. Yeah. If it was innocent, she would have said something at the time. Yeah. She wouldn't be dodging people. Not a lot of people come off very well in this one. No. Other than, like, the aunt and sister. Yeah. The other aunt, I mean, Trina. Yeah. Even if she's innocent, she's not entirely blameless in this. No, she is not blameless. She's far from it. She did leave him somewhere. Yeah, she admitted to leaving him somewhere, and that is her cover story, so it must be... What I'm thinking is what really happened must be worse, if that was her lie. <sighs> Listen, if I was babysitting a kid, right, and it, that kid went missing, that's it. It's my fault. Yeah. It's the same... I get that she was living with him, she might have, like, been struggling, but it's the same thing. She's at fault. Mm. I don't think she should be able to live it down, but she, apparently she has, and she's moved on. Yeah. She's clearly not too troubled by it. No, this is, this is... Ugh. Yeah, I I think the sad thing in a way is that for quite a lot of the time, he's just, this kid's just a problem that no one wants to deal with, really. Yeah. Which is not nice for a child. Mm. And even though he seems, you know, he seemed to be happy. But... It's because he didn't know any different, yeah. though. But also, you don't know what he was feeling deep down. He might come across as quite hyper and happy, but you don't know what he's feeling. Yeah, true. Kids go through depression as well. I mean, it's not just an adult thing. Yeah. Kids, I mean, kids are a lot cleverer than we think emotionally. They, they know what's going on. I think they yeah. can tell if they're not. They can tell better than us what's going on. Yeah. It's, oh, man. We're not going to be able to figure this one out. Yeah. All I know is that I don't care what she gets locked up for, but I think Belinda should get locked up for at least a little bit. Mm. And she shouldn't be able to have kids. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. They should, like, forcibly, like, put an implant in her or something to stop having kids. Yeah. You should be able to do that. I get that that's sort of, like, deeming the place a totalitarian state. But, like I said before, having a kid isn't a right, it's a privilege. Yeah. It should be a privilege. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, like, thoroughly depressed. So... Yeah. So, can we end this now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, like, before, like, both of us, like, just shed tears. And it's like, why? What happened to you? Yeah. I mean, it'd be, it's a bit like the um, Bear Brook murder. It's nice to believe, or is it the Springfield Free? It's probably a better example. It's been nice to believe they're still alive. Yeah, the problem with this one is that he's so young, and I've got a face to the name. Whereas yeah. the Bear Brook murders, I didn't really. I had, like... a reconstruction and that creeped the hell out of me remember yeah but this one and the face it just seems happy and it's staring at me and i've I've read about it a few times over the years and it always makes me upset yeah it's sad naturally the fact that you know this little kid's died but i think also the fact that 
he didn't necessarily have the greatest starts of life in as well. No. But despite that, he seemed quite happy. I think that's the tragedy as well. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm going to go. I okay. need to leave because I'm depressed. Can we, like, do something happy next week for once? Um, We've done so many depressing ones of late. Like, even, like, the, the bride and seek one, that was about a bride falling into a chest and dying yeah that was hardly light-hearted i don't think we've got the ability to be light-hearted oh man is this why we had chris around for so long yeah it's a shame we killed him yeah he he brought happiness to our lives ah man we're so depressing man yeah um, yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna say that this is a wrap but i don't think there's anything more we can say yeah other than like email us that thing that i told you to email us because i know there was something that i didn't know and I know that I asked you to email us, but I can't remember what that thing was. Was it the year he went missing? Yeah, the year he, the year she said um, she, dropped she him left off. him. Yeah, when she actually left him at yeah. the social services building, because yeah. that would be good to know. Yeah, because we got two thousand. To be that, that article, that I think we we're both reading the same. What the Baltimore? Well, to be Sun. fair, they all say the same thing because I've got quite a few, but it's pretty much the same thing. I think the way they phrased it, though, they, it does not clear whether. She told them that in 2005 or whether it actually happened in 2005. Uh, well... So I read from it that it happened in 2005, but you read that it, that she told them it happened in 2005. They need to be a bit clearer on that. Right? Well, with the Charlie Project, it doesn't actually say. It says that he was reported missing in 2005. And when they tracked Belinda down, she said that she'd left him at the building. But she, there's no date. So yeah. I assumed it was after 2000, it was around 2002, because that was the last concern, confirmed sighting yeah. by um, Trina. But I don't know. That's just my presumption. Yeah. Because if it's some time after that, then she needs to fill in more details, doesn't she? Yeah. But then also because the police searched her, the property she lived in in 2002. So, and that's another reason why I just assumed that it happened in 2002. She said that she'd left um, him in 2002, because if, she said that she'd left him in 2004. Why not search the property she lived in in 2004? Um, That's just my assumptions. Did you say she, her property was searched in 2002? The property she lived in in 2002 was searched oh, right. after um, yeah. he was reported missing. So that's why another reason I just assumed that um, she said that she had left him in 2002 at the social service. Yeah. Rather than 2005. Yeah. I think you're probably right, but... It's still not clear, is it, though? Really? Yeah, but either way, it's bad, because yeah. um, in two thousand, if she'd left him in 2002, if she actually did it, why on earth would she tell uh, um, his other aunt when she got contacted in 2005 that he's on a school field trip? Yeah. Why not just say that social services took him? Yeah. Because I think the problem is she's basically shot herself in the foot by saying that yeah. he's on a school field trip. She's making herself look guilty there. Yeah. So she doesn't help Even, herself. Yeah. So I think that's one of the main indicators. We barely talked about what she said, but that statement that she said, that he was on a school field trip. But I think that's the most telling, because she was obviously trying to cover something. Yeah. The only reason she said she left him at the social services because the police had caught up with her. Yeah. So, yeah, there's something about her, man. I, I know she has something to do with this. I don't know what happened happen specifically i i have high hopes but low expectations about yeah. what happened she's not trustworthy she's definitely not i mean yeah yeah anyway i really want to stop this now yeah, yeah. please remember remember when we first decided to do a podcast remember like the first thing i said was when we said we were going to do like mysteries and stuff unsolved things yeah the first thing i said was i don't want to do anything involving kids Mm. And we've done, so far, this is our second podcast episode that we've done on the kid. The first one was a Lindbergh kidnapping. Yeah. Do you want to know whose idea those two were? Yours. Exactly. Oh, God, you're the freak here, aren't you? Well, I'm like a sadist or a masochist. Oh. That's it. I'm giving myself pain because I know these are going to be more frustrating than the regular ones. Yeah. I think we should bid good day. Yeah, we probably should. <laughs> yes, so... um. We hope you managed to go back and listen to this with a bottle of tequila with you and take a shot every time I or Matt says... It, to be honest, you didn't say it that much. I said it like every other sentence. Yeah. Every time we use the words frustrating or frustrated. 
Yeah. Please take a shot. Um, hopefully you don't get alcohol poisoning. <laughs> if you do, it's quite funny, yeah. If you do get alcohol poisoning, contact us on the Facebook, the Twitter, the email at thedogsdeduction at gmail.com. And maybe send us recordings of your accents. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to beat us, so don't bother. Yeah. Do, do, do. Okay. Good to buy. Yeah. Adios. Amigos.